It's a way of life that gained momentum not too long ago and has quickly caught on. Entire nations are using the word like second nature. And that word is organic. Have you ever wondered what going organic actually means? It lays no claim to science. Organic deals with agricultural practice, not with food safety. And most people think organic means free of chemicals and good to eat. On Serico Life, let's talk today is Rohan Petiagoda, a taxonomist, winner of the Rolex Award for Enterprise for his conversion of an abandoned tea plantation into natural forests, and a fellow of the National Academy of Sciences. He's a widely published author who is credited with discovering almost 100 new species of vertebrates from Sri Lanka. So your perception is that organic is a foreign certification system designed for consumers in foreign countries. You say that it is the new colonialism with the West telling us how to do things. How did you come to this conclusion? Absolutely, I, I do insist that this is a new form of colonialism, but my reason for saying that is, is, is not the usual reason. I find that many people who use this term organic haven't really thought through what it means. Basically, organic farming denies the use of modern agrochemicals, pesticides, herbicides, and so on. In effect, it practices farming as it was practiced prior to 1900. So it's, it's quite an old technology. This means that crop yields are substantially lower, usually between 20 and 40% lower than the yields we get from conventional agriculture. So the cost of producing a kilo of organic tea or organic rice is typically 20 to 40% higher in the organic system than in the conventional system. But consumers won't pay that premium price, 20 to 40% more, unless they have an assurance that the rice or tea is in fact organic. And this is where the certification agencies come in. There are seven foreign certification organizations operating in, in, in Sri Lanka. Six of them are European and one of them is Australian. They all claim to be non-profit. So these so-called non-profit certification agencies make their money by charging every single farmer between $300 and $600 a year to certify their produce as organic. Now, if that isn't colonialism, what is? because there are foreign agencies insisting that we pay this money so that we can label our product such that it can get into their markets. So now we have in Sri Lanka a million rice farmers and 400,000 tea farmers. Let's forget about the vegetable people for the moment. There's probably another half a million there. They are the backbone of our economy. And the organic certification agencies now stand to cream off as a result of these annual fees that every farmer is required to pay in order to have organic labels on his produce, 400 to 800 million dollars a year from the Sri Lankan economy. The hypocrisy of this business is simply not worth talking about. And that's why I talk about it as being the new colonialism. You have just put a spoke in the wheel of all those touting the goodness of organic food being safe saying that the perception of organic food being absolutely safe is an illusion. So, are organic products not as safe or are they not as healthy as it is made out to be? I'm not for a moment denying that organic food is safe, but I also argue that conventional food is safe. There's very little or no evidence in the scientific literature and there's thousands of studies done every year all over the world to suggest that conventional agriculture is in the least bit unsafe. But let's put it this way. There's no scientific evidence that organic food is any safer than conventionally farmed food. So the thing to remember is that all foods carry risks. It's up to producers and regulators and consumers to minimize those risks. Just by blindly following an ideology doesn't make food safe. People who eat organic food are very likely in any case to be health conscious. I can't think of many organic food aficionados who would, for example, be smokers or who would be obese or who would be eating lots of sweets. They tend to be healthy. So naturally, they would have better life health outcomes. But this is not because of the food they eat alone. It's because they are more likely to be conscious of their health in general. You can't just think that organic food by itself is going to make you healthier. It has to be part of a total lifestyle. It has to be part of a conscious and cautious way of consuming food. And that's an important thing in itself. But both conventional and organic agriculture can give you that. So with Sri Lanka moving towards organic farming, what do you think we need to be aware of? Of course, besides all that you said about the foreign certifications and also the costs involved, what else should we be aware of? 
Every organic farm has to operate now under the SLS 1324 standard. That's 85 pages of fine print. Now think about the average level of education and economic ability of our farmers. They come from the lowest socioeconomic stratum in Sri Lanka. And we are trusting this 85 page document of fine print, most of it which makes no scientific sense, and saying you have to follow this and pay your three to six hundred dollars a year to a foreign agency in order to be eligible to sell your food. I think that's fundamentally unfair. So that's that's going to result in a social problem and you will have a revolt from the farming community. Uh, mark my words, unless the government steps away from this, we are going to have a 1971 kind of insurrection from the farmers. But compulsory nationwide organic farming is another matter altogether. It will be an economic and environmental disaster. So Rohan surmises that going into total organic farming for Sri Lanka will be an environmental and economic disaster. His suggestion, get hold of the experts and start a dialogue and then what we need to see is whether the country can afford it. That was Rohan Petiagoda on Selling for Life. Let's talk. Please press the like sign on YouTube and do subscribe to Kaleidoscope with Savitri Rodrigo on YouTube and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. World of risks and obstacles, we are there to help you reach your goals. With 12 billion rupees worth of customer benefits in 2020 and a life insurance fund worth over 100 billion rupees, our strength is your strength. You focus on your goals, we will take care of the risks. Selenko Life, 